Good morning, everybody. Morning. It's really good to be here. And one has to say, you know, when I'm usually sitting out there and see the back of your heads, and you look a lot better from the front. <laughs> you really do. You're beautiful people. Well, most of you, anyway. Um, anyway, um, so my name's Robin. Um, my glorious, beautiful wife is sitting just there as well. Um, we live up in West Quantocks Head, the other end of the Quantocks, but we come and we worship here, and we've been here for a couple of years. Um, I'm retired. I was a financial advisor, a chartered financial planner, um, but across the last 15 or so years, rather than 150, as I think um, was the general view before, we've done various different voluntary work with uh, Christians Against Poverty, CAP. Um, that has involved us mainly doing uh, some money coaching, helping people to manage their money better. Um, so that's part of it. But I've also been a speaker for them. So I've spoken in various different churches across the land. Um, and I've also been a debt coach for them. So I've gone out to people's homes to help them to move into a place of freedom. Um, we haven't got Nick here today, have we? What did Nick do at a time like to now? He would probably ask you to... Ask the person next door a question of some nature or another. So, not wanting to depart from what our glorious leader has done in the past. Um, I want to ask a question to you. Um, so, have you ever had something that was, if you like, as just under your nose, but you've not been able to see it? Maybe something that is... In plain sight, but you haven't seen it. It may be something, um, I, I, I'll, I'll mention my wife, sorry, like her phone. <laughs> that is actually often those words spoken, where's the phone? Well, actually, it's there in front of you there. Anyway, so you've got a couple of minutes, just speak to the people around you. Is there anything like that? Have you got a, have you got a traveling mic? Can you... Grab one of them. It's right under my nose. Okay, so would anybody like to offer what, they might, what they've uh, just spoken? Any offers? Hi, so um, my name's Lindsay, and I've known Robert and had it quite a long time now. Um, keys for me. Um, keys, you know, they go wandering. You think, oh, I left them there. Uh, we have in our house what we call the perch for the keys. And when anything goes missing, I think they should be on the perch, but they're not. And so um, I'm very interested to hear what you've got to say about this, but it's keys for me. Anybody else? Any offerings? Down over there. Uh-oh. <laughs> my wife's going to hate me for this. Um, my wife, about eight weeks ago, uh, was looking for her keys to go to work. Her keys are for her bike and for her locker room work. And we, we turned the house inside out, upside down. Uh, in the end, she couldn't find them. I'll go to the end of the story first. She actually found the keys on the hook, where they were supposed to be, <laughs> directly under another set of keys. But the, the outcome of her rushing to work because she couldn't find her keys, she had to borrow a pair of shoes from a fellow colleague and ended up breaking her right foot, which is only <laughs> just recovered. Um, yeah. <laughs> Last Top. one. Does anybody else have a, another one? Top Maybe that. it didn't involve a trip to the hospital or anything. No? No others? That's fine. I remember for me, I remember when I was about uh, 25, 24, 25, um, I had a beard. Um, but there was a point where I was going to go on holiday. And I knew I was planning on shaving off my beard at some point, but I thought it was probably sensible to shave off my beard before I went on holiday, and then I got a tan, rather than have a cut your beard off after you've been on holiday and you end up with this strange white face. Anyway, so I cut my beard off. After I cut my beard off, I think there was at least two or three people that came and said, you've grown a moustache. <laughs> 
how does that happen? <laughs> that, you, you know, I'm, I'm a lover of wildlife, and I walk on the top of the Quantox on a regular basis, and you can, you, you can virtually not walk on the Quantox without seeing deer, if you've got eyes that see. But, you know, you can walk on the Quantox and not see a thing, <laughs> And I, I was up there just not that long ago, and there was a gentleman that I see often. And I said to him as I was wandering along, so have you seen any deer? He said, no, none today. And I looked across the hill to the other side of the valley, and there was about 40 of them looking back at us from the other side. But, you know, we don't always see what is right in front of our faces. And I'll come back to that as a point. Um, okay, so this scripture. So Luke 4 verses 18 and 19. I'm going to read it again for you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, a couple of lines later, he says, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. As Carmen said, this is a prophetic word. This was written um, back in Isaiah 61. But Jesus was handed this scroll in a temple and he read from it. The fact that he added the lines afterwards makes this really, really significant. Today, this prophecy is fulfilled in your hearing. Plainly, this scripture, and I mean, there's all sorts of uses for this scripture. In Isaiah's time, where people were, were stuck in, um, in Babylon, and they needed a saviour for that. But there's lots and lots of applications. And plainly... The main application is about people that are poor. And you know, poverty doesn't come on its own. When you are poor, often there are other parts of your life which aren't working very well as well. Commonly, relationships are broken. It gets really hard to talk to each other. Often people are suffering from all sorts of illness, ailments and, and illnesses, partially as a result of the debt that they hold, but partially the debt comes because of their ailments. Can you imagine being in a really hard place and hearing these words from Jesus, declaring... good news to the poor, declaring liberty to the captives. You know, when you are poor, often you are scared to open the door. Because there's a reasonable chance that a bailiff may be the other side of the door, or watching your house. You may well be too scared to answer the telephone. You're almost definitely too scared to open the mail when it lands on your doormat. And Jesus somehow knew and knows all of that. He knows how each one of us are feeling. So this truly is the gospel. The meaning of the word gospel is the good news. This is really, really, really good news. And it's not delayed news. It's not, look, I'm going to do something about your situation and it's going to be in 20 years' time. Today, today is the day of the Lord's favour. I've muddled my pages. Um, the Joseph um, Roundtree Foundation does surveys of what the debt situation is in the UK. 
And uh, at the moment, there are assessed to be 14.4 people under the poverty line in the UK. 14.4 million people. That's a big number. Lots of people in the UK claim universal credit. It helps with all sorts of bills and things. But in January of this year, it is reckoned that 50% of those people claiming universal credit ran out of money before they ran out of month. They couldn't afford to put food on the table by the end of the month. 40% of the population generally, not those in poverty, but the population generally, have cut back on their electricity or their gas in order to get through, because they just can't afford it. Life is fairly desperate for an awful lot of people. And actually, when we consider that it's 22% of the population in the UK that we're talking about, that means there's every chance that some of you today here are suffering from lack and the fear of lack and are worried about what the future holds for you. Certainly, if we walk outside these doors and go into the streets of Taunton, if you walk down the road and count one, two, three, four, five, then there's another person that's under the poverty line. All around us, right here, the need is very, very real. And as I say, those people are too scared. On a survey, CAP do a survey of its clients every single year, and they ask them various questions. 45% um, of the respondents said that they were too scared to open the door. 45% of people. 75% of them won't answer the telephone. 79% won't answer, that won't, won't read their mail. I think it's 57% of them are taking medication for one sort or another, and 46% of them, it's new conditions that have happened as a result of their, the fear and the worry about what their situation is. We tend to think of that scripture where we talk about the... Um, those that are oppressed, or those that are poor, or those that are captive, as a number of different groups of people. But every single one of those classifications applies to the poor, often. And oppressed, absolutely. One of the things about oppression is that you don't feel that there's any way out. So you just sink deeper and deeper. 88% of respondents said that they didn't feel that there was anybody that they could talk to. And the statistic which has always got to me is that now 46% of the respondents have attempted or considered suicide. They're down. They really are down. But this is the good news. The problem is that half of the population out there hadn't heard this good news. And we need to go out there and actually tell them the good news. We are the body of Christ, yes? The body of Christ. That means we've got, some of you have got legs and arms and voices that you can talk to people with compassion. Ask them how they are. Maybe take them a meal. This scripture is the founding scripture of um, Christians Against Poverty. It's what they use all the time. And as a charity, the charity was started off by a guy 
who lost everything. He was in financial services himself, but he lost everything. He lost his home, his marriage collapsed, and he ended up in a bedsit with two kids. But he knew that there was a way out, that actually there are systems in place to help people just like that. So he didn't need to fear, and he knew Jesus Christ as his saviour. He knew that he was on side with him. So he started CAP. Now, CAP does not just do everything for you. CAP believes that we are the body of Christ. So what it does is to put tools into our hands that we can use to help people out there. Now, some of that is the debt centres where literally go into people's homes to help them to actually recover from a debt situation and take them through a debt relief order or something of that nature. For other people, it's actually just that they need to be able to manage their money a bit better. So the CAP Money course, which is run by about 420-odd churches across the UK, does that. It helps you to be able to budget. It helps you just to make sense of what is confusing and to save money where you didn't think you could save it. So we're running a cap, a, a cap budgeting course, a, 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 a money coaching course that starts on the 10th of September at 7pm. It will be in the hall over there. It is completely and utterly free. And I don't want to be there on my own. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to take my wife to make sure I'm not there on my own. But there's no point in this if people aren't there. Could you, one, pray for people that they might come, but actually also come along? I remember hearing a, um, uh, we had once a speaker that was a, uh, had been a heroin addict and Jesus Christ had saved him from his heroin addiction. He really knew that there was a purpose for life. And, and he once came up with this, this statement during his, his talk to us, which was that if there is not a purpose for your life, then when you get baptised, the pastor would just hold your head under the water and not lift it. But the reality is God doesn't want more people in heaven. He wants more of Jesus here on the streets of Taunton. There is a purpose for each one of us to reach out to a hurting world and encourage them, not to judge them, but to encourage them and help them. Last year... 2,292 people became debt-free through CAP. But actually hundreds came to faith as well, through that journey as well. I want to ask you for your prayers. So your prayers for this course that we're running, your prayers for CAP running forward, and actually, yes, maybe your money as well. CAP does not get a penny from the government. So there are leaflets on your seats. So I'd encourage you, please would you consider making a donation. It doesn't matter how small it is or how big it is, but make a donation so that we can carry on doing this work. Whoops. I've got some books knocking around called A Story We Can't Ignore which is, is just a, a snapshot of what the situation is, what the need is. I'm going to stop at that, but just again, um, I'd actually want to uh, just to ask you that maybe you could, whether it's now or whether it's when you go home, that you can read a scripture. I don't know if it's, it's gone now, but this scripture Read Luke. I remember when I very first spoke these words. The spirit of the living God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. And 
These were Jesus' words, and it feels hard to say them yourself, because God has anointed me. But the truth is, he has anointed each one of us to do this work. We need his spirit in us to do this work. But that's his plan, that's his purpose, that's his good news. And that's the end of my goings on. Thank you all.